Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 66 of the American Muslim Experience. My name is Zaki Hassan, and I'm joined by Pervez Ahmed. Hey, welcome listeners. Uh, thank you, Zaki. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. Not to you, but maybe <laughs> I, to I, someone I in your life. I know how to respond to that, yes. <laughs> well, yes. I'm telling our listeners that it's, it's Mother's it, we Day. We are recording on Mother's Correct. Day. Although by the time you probably listen to this, it won't be Mother's Day. But it, every day should be Mother's Day, right? Yes. <laughs> I, I concur. <laughs> That is true. Uh, we are also here with Brian Hall. Hey, Zeki. <laughs> Wrong podcast. <laughs> What's going on? He wandered in. It's, it, it's, it's like uh, what, what, the Jerry Seinfeld's Two no, Worlds. This, this is a shared or, podcast. Sorry, George, George Costanza's Two Worlds this Colliding. Is, this is the infinity war of my podcast. <laughs> yeah. We're crossing over. I like that. See, I, was I say like that better than the... Flintstones, yeah. but that's much more yeah. modern. More, more yeah. recent. I had yes. the yeah, Costanza reference. So I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. a co-host of the movie film podcast which Brian is my co-host for, and he That's decided right. to just sit in on, on this one and kind of see kind of see what I'm doing That's when right. I'm not yeah. talking movies with him. Yeah. <laughs> and we're here with our guest, Bushra Bernie. Hey, salam alaikum. Mm-hmm. How are you? Alaikum salam. Doing all right, alhamdulillah. How are yeah. you guys doing? We're doing very, very well. It is Mother's Day. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's, yeah. I don't yeah. know if you're here. No, I, yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me, but yeah. <laughs> so, we should tell our listeners who Bushra is, yes. like, as we usually do. So, so Bushra is a playwright, mm-hmm. as of, like, three months ago. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Right? So, so you, you have a new play out called Designated Muslim. Mm-hmm. And I love the story about this play, and I want you to share that because I read it on your on your blog. But I just think uh, it's just something so fascinating for our listeners. And you had a reading of the play about a couple of weeks ago that mm-hmm. unfortunately I was unable to attend because I was out of town. But my wife and my daughters attended, and they loved it, and I got great reviews from them. And they tend to be you know pretty strong critics. So okay. uh, yeah, um, but no, I, I mean you're a playwright, but I think more importantly, she's a fan of the show. She's a listener of the show. She has. Oh, that's that, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm here. That's so why you're all here. People who listen right. to this show that's just right. contact Zaki yes. and Perfect. That's right. That's someone right. Here. <laughs> and I gotta say, I gotta thank you in person. A recent pay, uh, patron of the show. Oh, just wow! Just became a recent patron of the show as well. As should all our listeners. Who knows? Maybe you'll have an episode dedicated <laughs> to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was listening to the last episode. It's, it's pay for play, my friend. You know, it hey, yeah. comes from I, the top that's, down. That's so. the policy of this country. It is the policy of the country now, so we just go top down. Yeah, I was listening to the last episode, and you guys were, you know, giving your spiel about the Patreon, and I was like, yeah, people who listen to the podcast should really pay. And I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's when I decided to sign up. Thank you very much for so that. You should do a Patreon for, for the other show. Yeah, I can see the, it's all coming <laughs> together here. Energy, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, Cinder. but yeah, and welcome, Brian. Sorry, yeah, thank I didn't you. get to Thanks welcome you. Yeah, it's great. I, I've been now. I've been on you, your other podcast. Yes, well, we've yeah. never had your co-host on this podcast. So yeah. this wow. is this is wonderful. What were we talking about? The, the Phantom Menace. The Phantom Menace. The Phantom Menace. Fifth anniversary. Yeah. Wow. The the fifteenth anniversary. Wow. Wow. We're even dating ourselves by that yeah. account. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, that's right. Wow. Yeah, 15th anniversary. Yeah, you should go back and listen to that episode. I, I think I probably was listening to I offered to that. some sure invaluable right. insight that that, that that is heretofore mix, missed always on their podcast. I yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, I. That's I, what I do when I show up on podcasts. It, it was a good episode from. Okay. I, I haven't I'm listened kidding. to it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming. I'm only kidding. Yeah. I think it was good, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Fill yeah. the Parvez side <laughs> hole. <laughs> In the yeah. I'm no what Glenn Greenwald, but Glenn uh, Greenberg. 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 Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Journalist. That's right. Sorry, I always get the two mixed up uh, as I should. Um, but yeah, no. I'm. I, but uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was fun. Anyway, that, that was fun. Welcome, so, Brian. So, so Busher, tell the, yeah. the play is designated Muslim, mm-hmm. and it. I love the fact that you did not set out to write a play. Right, right. It's it, and and so for me, the most fascinating part of this narrative is an idea popped into your head for something. And then here you are seeing your words performed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, that's I kind of call myself like an accidental playwright because it almost came out of laziness where I was writing, you know, I had this conversation in my head between two friends. They had no names, but it was just kind of living there for a while. And I'm like, let me just get this down on paper. And then I didn't want to st- uh, write the stuff in the middle, you know. And then she said this, and then the, and then the light slowly dimmed and you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so it was just dialogue. And uh-huh. then, um, you know, so I just wrote this down. It wasn't really anything. It was just a Google document. Hmm. And uh, I was at a friend's place, and she's a writer, editor. And she's like, send it over. I'm like, okay. So um, it kind of inspired me to write more. 
And so, you know, from there, I had this, uh, I had this person who was waiting for my work. Mm. So it just kind of like, uh, it just kind of stemmed from there. Right. And, um, you know, all the stuff I've read about plays since I wrote the play has always said, you know, outline your work, know where it's going to end, you mm. know, when you start writing it. And I had none of that. So I'm glad I didn't read all that stuff before because then I would have just probably never started. You'd have psyched yourself yeah, up. Yeah, probably like, well, I don't know where this is going and this is nothing. This is just that one conversation hmm. between two people, one person not quite me, the other person not quite a friend of mine, and then just kind of... But, yeah. I mean, let's take a step backwards. What it, it, This had to have come from somewhere. I mean, it was prompted by something. And you haven't even discussed what the dialogue was about. I mean, what what was the road to getting it even starting writing what what was it what what was the spark well i think it just being me just being muslim just mm-hmm. being an american here uh so the conversation in my head was really just about two friends just kind of commiserating over uh dinner at a restaurant okay just dialogue about uh you know like relationships or lack thereof and just where one is going on in life and uh where one is in life uh, so uh just kind of stemming from where I am in life mm. and that's where it all came from hmm. that maybe a conversation I never really had in real life but I could see myself having with my friend and where our respective places were um, with each other mm. and, and when was this this was in 2015 I just checked my email not too long ago about when I sent my friend this email wow. with these uh, with these I had like two and a half scenes Okay. And um, so then, yeah, it was back in two, uh, 2015 where I just wrote something. I'm like, here it is. I don't know what it is, but here it is. I think it's a play. It was called it was called Untitled Draft Draft for a while. <laughs> so uh, you know, I didn't even have a Riveting. title. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of people have yeah. started writing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a. Uh, and it stays that on yeah. for a lot of people. Right. And, so the and basically, that. it was just me making it up as I went along. Like yeah. uh, you know, at the first scene between two friends, then another scene between the main character and her sister who was maybe something like somebody else who I knew in real life. Mm. And then it just kind of stemmed from there, just like the stuff I've seen in life. And maybe maybe a little bit from the movies I've seen. And then, uh, you know, just conversations. So it all just kind of came together slowly, slowly, slowly. And then, you know, working full time, that kind of took course precedence. So yeah. I probably wrapped it all up by the end of 2016. Now, like, I'd be remiss not to ask, like, what's sort of your origin story? I mean, are you uh-huh. a local Bay, Bay Area person? You born and raised here? What's like maybe your family background? We always, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know how it goes. Yeah, we, we do like to ask those yeah. questions. So, yeah, so just so our listeners get a, a sense of, you know, w- you know, where some of those early, um, you know, inspirations perhaps even came from or uh, uh, what your background was. Right. So I've been in the Bay Area my entire life, mm-hmm. born and raised here in mm-hmm. um, New York and Fremont and uh, here in California. And my parents are from Karachi, Pakistan, uh, so they came here in the 70s. My dad had an even further history with California before that, uh, going to Cal Poly. So California was always this place that he, uh, you know, he remembered. He first went to, Chi- they first went to Chicago. Who does After they get married, after that they is... got married. But, uh, you know, so it was funny. like snowing there, you yeah. know, and it was just like, what? <laughs> yeah. So my dad's like, oh, California. So uh, they settled here in the Bay Area. And yeah, just, uh, we've always been here in the Bay Area. So I kind of grew up here. We went to high school here in Fremont. Um, you know, um, and the people who are, you know, representative in my play, you know, from people I've known since high school, you know, so like my friends, uh, well, one particular friend. So I uh, just have been that kind of person, just consider myself an American Muslim Pakistani. Mm-hmm. And however, which way you want to just put those words Whatever together. Order, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But I feel like I'm just absolutely a product of being a Muslim, but being American and just, you know, uh, praying five times a day, but still dropping in pop culture references with my friends of just, you know, them knowing exactly what I'm talking about and vice versa, yeah. even if they've grown up in different cultures, um, you know, different uh, immigrant background and all of that. Right. So, yeah, just always been a California person. Mm. And I think you can probably see that in my script when you see the sheer number of dudes uh, <laughs> that exist there, uh, you know, from being from California, you can have entire conversations with just dude, 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 dude. Right. dude. <laughs> Dude, yeah. yeah, and it's all about the inflection, right? yes, it, yes, yes. <laughs> right, right, exactly. No, it's like I didn't even know about the Chicago connection, but I find it fascinating because you know, like past guest of the show, Dr. Omer, you know, he, he, he often says that 
if there were a Muslim capital of, of, of Muslims in America, it would be Chicago because there's so much that sort of blossoms out of Chicago in terms of the rich history uh, mm-hmm. of, of Islam in America. Um, and I mean, obviously, my co-host here sitting to my right is also from Chicago. I, I am a Chicagoan. Uh, and then Brian, also our guest, yep. uh, is also from Chicago. So there's a, That's where we met. That's our origin there, story. Origin story. <laughs> there you go. If you will, yeah. um, and I lived there for a, a number of years. My father, again, first place he landed prior to getting married, went to school, was Chicago, and then went back home, got married, and then, yeah, my, brought my mom here. My mom was like, all right, we're not having this. It's too cold. Yeah. Uh, yeah I moved yeah. down to Texas for this they could get away from the cold. Ironically enough, now my mom is settled back in Chicago, yeah. but uh, there you go. Um, and then uh, my daughter, born in Chicago, so I, there's a few Chicago connections there. Anyway, so, um, but I do know you do, you have dabbled in writing yes yeah. you have a blog where you write about stuff pop, pop culture and movie reference movies movie and reviews, com- right. movie reviews even sorry yeah and uh your thoughts on uh pop culture comic books etc yeah so uh it was have so- you been consumer of that kind of stuff all always, your life always really? yeah i mean uh just grew up with like um, i mean i feel like i'm i should you know maybe dating myself here too but in the hey. same generation almost as like zucky and brian where right. you know like the cartoons from the 80s no she didn't you know? mention me because she knows yeah. i'm just, I just a granddaddy <laughs> yeah i, I no, you know <laughs> I feel like I hear them talk so much about the shows and the TV shows that they that do that, um, you know, the Simpsons, you know, seasons one through 10 or one through 11, you know, the jury's out. So when it, you know, <laughs> the, the golden era, the golden era. Yeah. yeah. And just like the kind of cartoons that I grew up with, just it's, I feel like that era, you you kind of just automatically are into certain types of things. Mm. That's right. So and I grew up like as a Superman fan. Uh, I'm still a Superman fan, you know, always. Despite, uh, never mind. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> yeah, please don't. I, I, <laughs> yeah, <it's> just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although, so I, I'm at that interesting age where I'm, I think I'm just old enough uh-huh. where, like, I remember going to see Empire Strikes Back in the uh-huh. movie theater, you know, or yeah. I remembered my dad taking me to see Superman the movie, you uh-huh. know. So, like, I'm just slightly old enough. Whereas I think you guys kind of come in a little after the fact. Yes. But yet, of course, love the stuff and consumers of the stuff. I would, I would imagine the yeah, same for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it could be able to kind of converse in that same pop culture, you know. Um, shorthand. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, shorthand. Vernacular. Vernacular. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Vernacular. That was the word. Right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and so um, you've always kind of, like you said, been mm-hmm. kind of. Um, it was, it's been more like a, it's just a place for me to write. I mean, I started back on a live journal forever ago, which was, I believe, one step up from the GeoCities website <laughs> that, you know, just started back in the day. And then uh, one day I was like, I want to have my own website. I'm calling it Caffeinated Muslim. And, uh, you know, but back then the writing was more about, you know, the time I wore two different shoes to work or something like that. But mm, uh, yeah. so, you know, for me, it was a place to practice my writing. Mm, it wasn't right. something that I, I saw myself, oh, I'm a writer, mm. you know, it was just something that yeah, I want to put some thoughts on paper or, you know, blog and other people seem to be doing it. it would be nice to have a website. Why not? Mm. So, you know, one of those, you know, bought my, you know, like bought the domain name, website, web hosts and all that. So even though it's something that I never told people about in the beginning, um, aside from like a few friends, Mm -hmm. it was, it was a place where I really got to practice my writing, Mm -hmm. where I could kind of see the evolution of my own writing Mm -hmm. along the way. And I'm happy for it. And even though maybe it never became this viral thing, not a viral thing, but just like maybe I wanted more readers or something like that. Mm -hmm. For me, it's always been this place where I could really practice and Mm. finding out maybe what I'm good at, what I'm not good at. What I'm not good at, maybe just straight up movie reviews like you, Zucky. Like, <laughs> I feel like yours are really nice and nuanced oh, and, you. you know, they're written really well. Mine are like, well, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe I'll talk about some other aspect of it because, uh, you know, like maybe writing about that wasn't my strong suit. And, of course, coffee has always been a thing. I was going to say, caffeinated yeah. Muslim, you kind of lend yeah, yourself to. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh Traveling and drinking coffee has always been something that I've really enjoyed doing both at the same time. Mm. So I feel like the the blog, the Caffeinated Muslim, became that site where I could talk about these things. And, uh, you know, one of my most read uh, blog posts was about traveling in Islamic Spain, for example. Like, you know, a lot of uh, people still uh, from this post from years ago where 
uh, people really, you know, seem to clamor onto that. We're like, you know, tell us more about this. Mm. I'm like, okay, you can Google this, but okay, sure. <laughs> you know, let me tell you more about it. And um, it's, you, you had traveled to Spain? Yeah, it oh, was part okay. of this Islamic history tour oh, nice. uh, like years ago that really started this um, traveling thing in me. Who, who was, like, what um, was it? The... Was, it was from, like, you know, Harun Mughal. His, oh. um, it was from his... Uh, something past, he had done. Past yeah, guest of the yeah, show. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Wow. And um, so, uh, so something like that. So a lot of traveling, a lot of writing mm. about that coffee, and uh, even like last time I went to Chicago, I was just drinking coffee. So then I wrote about that, and then uh, <laughs> nice. so, uh, so then you know I decided to, you know, just kind of take a step back and maybe focus on this play that I was writing, um, especially the last few months where I haven't really written that much. And uh, so, and even this play was something that was just an organic thing. Mm -hmm. And even at that point where I was finished and my editor friend was like, okay, well, let's get some friends together and read this. And I'm like, you mean like tell them about it (laughs) (laughs) and have them read it? And so then, um, and that turned out to be that whole other experience where, uh, just being open to having other people read my stuff, mm-hmm. and for me, it's always been this gradual thing, of um, you know, even with the with the website, I think maybe five six years down the line, I finally told like family more more family more friends about it, and uh, to, with this play, just even telling more people beyond the two or three people that knew about it was kind of a big deal for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, as someone who's always been very closed off from like oh, just like not really want to not my super close friends my introverted self doesn't like sharing things about me beyond uh you know uh, just very general stuff so for me that was a big deal to just even with my close friends even share this this play that was just an accidental play mm. mm-hmm. so now i like i, I i've uh, again just heard you know through my wife and, and kids who, who did attend the reading um, I, I do. I know a, a little bit about what you mm-hmm. dab- like some of the themes you dabble in, mm-hmm. and what the play is generally about. But maybe tell us a little bit about that and how that came to be, um, in terms of what the play eventually became mm-hmm. or is becoming. Right. So uh, the play, uh, which um, I should say, after it was written, then got the title designated Muslim oh, from okay. my friend, the editor, who she, you know, who finally said untitled drafty draft was not going to work, <laughs> and uh, so. She dubbed it as that, and I checked the URL was available, so I'm like, yep, sounds good. And uh, so it became this, for me, the play became this exploration of, like, this 30-something-year-old American Muslim Pakistani woman who wears a job trying to figure out her place. Well, she's already very comfortable with her place in life, but maybe her coworkers still don't quite understand her. Such, despite, an un, such, such an unrelatable uh, yeah. subject matter for yeah. you, right? Yeah. Exactly. 30 year old something. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it just came to me, you know, just science fiction That's right. kind That's right. of it's, yeah, uh, yeah. concept. And then um, also dealing with that, dealing with like relationship okay. stuff as well. So at one point while I was writing the play, I asked my friend, um, I was like, look, I have this relationship stuff going on and I have this work stuff going on. What should I be focusing on here? And, you know, she said, well, whatever feels right to you, you know, where do you think the story's going to go? And I'm um, like, I don't know. So it all kind of culminates in like this work party where everything kind of comes together, mm-hmm. uh, which for now, that's the ending. Um, but um, after the stage reading, I saw that it actually can go a little bit further along. So basically, I had these two stories converge where, mm-hmm. you know, so like for myself, somebody who's been working in like corporate America, or whatever, for like 10, 15 years now, oh my God. No, that uh, maybe some 10, 12 years yeah. or something like that. But then, uh, you know, just, you know, like, I feel like there's this coworker who is an amalgam of all the guy coworkers that I've had in my life. And, uh, and, and then even like, um, the relationship stuff, just, you know, the conversations that the main character has with her friend, with her sister, are maybe reminiscent of ones that I've had. And, you know, maybe this, this guy in the story, there was no actual real version of him, which everybody was asking me okay. after the play <laughs> because they all saw people that they knew in the play except for that one person, okay. Busher, who's Jake. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, No, no, is Jake this. the... Uh, the potential suitor yeah, or love yeah, interest yeah, in, yeah, the, in, yeah. the, in the play. In the, okay. so, so in the story, yeah. you have Zuleika, who's okay. a main character, okay. um, who is Pakistani and uh, grew up in America. And you have Jake, who is in a white, who's white American, but also Muslim, okay. grew up Muslim, not a convert. 
Gotcha. So it's about their so dynamic as well. Into, he was born in, in the play. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, right. Yeah, That's what I'm yeah. saying. So he was born Muslim. Yes. That's yes. a very interesting dynamic. Yeah. Because we're beginning to see who is Jake in real life. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the letters of J A here, <laughs> it's right there in the name. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Ejok. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, so have you? Uh, so because that's no, that's really interesting. And when I heard that from from my wife, that my I, I, I was even more interested in knowing more about the play because I think that's a fascinating thing to explore. This idea of you know. A, just a white American or even, you know, black American, mm-hmm. whatever, just uh, who is born into the faith. Mm-hmm. Because oftentimes, automatically, again, for people like ourselves who are, who are born into the faith uh, and come from immigrant backgrounds, we automatically assume that that person converted to Islam. Yeah. Whereas now, we, it's the community is, is mature enough and has been around, around, around enough in America where you're beginning to see more and more of that, where it's like, no, I'm not a convert. My parents are Muslim. I got there, there's this broad spectrum right. of what it means to be Muslim in America that spans, I mean, so many, so many oh, subtleties of, that's right. of uh, how people interface with the faith that we don't. You, I was going to say we don't talk about, but I, I don't. We, we don't even know how to talk about. Right. And and I think that's a conversation that almost is. To, it's going to gradually start becoming more and more prevalent in in the the years and and decades mm. ahead. You know. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, far from being a monolith, I mean, I think even as Muslims, we kind of struggle with kind of identifying. You know, all the various, like you said, you know pockets within our community of representation and yeah it's like the kind of diversity that we see right yeah i mean and we're beginning to see more the, and more of. P- people are are just just as time goes on there's going to be uh, a variety of ways people people uh, interface with the religion mm-hmm. as, as as something spiritual as something practical as something uh, that's part of their background but does not represent their current you know, I mean, it, it, it's like whether we're talking about the Christian experience or the Jewish mm-hmm. experience, et cetera, it's, it's all the same. So we're yeah. going to see that as part of the American Muslim experience. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. And I think part of the reason I didn't make him a convert yeah. was because I don't know if I could tell that story properly. Uh, and, I, right. you know, I feel like this story, Designated Muslim, was more about Zuleika and her perspective as a Pakistani American, that to make him a convert would have like, well, I wouldn't have been able to do his story justice hmm. in this particular play. And even, um, I'm kind of jumping around here, but even some of the feedback that I got, uh, you know, was really, you know, positive. But some people, they said they wanted to see more diverse Muslims. They wanted to see maybe Muslim women who don't wear hijab because the two women, uh, two women Muslim, uh, two female Muslim characters yeah, yeah. in the play both wear hijab. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, my, Zuleika, my, yeah, Zuleika and, and her one. sister both gotcha. wear a scarf, okay. which was part of the story, you know. Mm. And, oh, uh, right. And... And for me, that it was like, well, you know, this this play can't be the one play that saves them all, <laughs> you know, right. and and you know, one play to save, them yeah, all. you know, <laughs> so, uh, and it just it goes it goes to show that there is room for just so many more stories, you right. know, because you can't have Zuleika who, uh, you know, one, it's a play, you can't have like so many characters. Uh, you That's know, right. on the stage because of, you know, like, I guess, like, it's just they don't really do plays with so many people. But, um, but you know, you can't have, like, a Pakistani person automatically, you know, have, like, maybe, like, oh, you know, like, this foster family of all these Muslims so we can tell all these different stories yeah. about exactly. all these different backgrounds. No, I think, and uh, no, that's an excellent point because I think, and a lot of it has to do with just the, the limited amount of um, – Cultural, like just a limited amount of cultural production that yeah. Muslims have, have have produced thus far in America, where because of that, because of the paucity of that, every single one becomes like essentialized. Yeah. So it's like for what was uh, the, like the Big Short, yeah. right? It's like, mm-hmm. well, you told the story, but why is it always big a, a brown? Oh, sorry, the, the, the big, big sick. Yeah. Thank you. Not the big I was like, why are we talking yeah, about Yeah, sorry. <laughs> exactly. Like, yes, Thank you. Like, um, Ryan Gosling represents all our <laughs> like douchebag. <laughs> jock boys you know <laughs> no it's true because i remember one of the criticisms and, and zeki i'm sure or brian too like you guys read this or heard this after the of movie the came sick, out the, the big, big sick, sick right yeah. where it was like oh great story funny script etc but it's like oh another brown guy falls in love with a white girl mm-hmm. like it, why is that Even always that a- is his specific life experience exactly so but yeah. that's the that's the that's the problem we run into where it's like every single 
expression becomes essentialized as mm-hmm. needing to represent all Muslim experiences or all Pakistani yeah. experiences. Well, you know, the thing, with, the thing with, uh, sorry, I didn't mean no, 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 no. Well, the thing with the big sick was that I feel like that criticism of him being with the white woman, yeah. I was like, that's the real life. That's fine. But my critique of that was that all the stuff that he made up uh, to appease Judd Apatow uh, to make, you know, make it funnier was to uh, accidentally create expensive. Pakistanis as looking at them as backwards. Ah, uh, oh, you like? Yeah, yeah I, I was so, going to ask you because yeah, you, wrote, you uh, wrote about the big. Oh, thing, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, no, 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 I didn't read it. Apologize. No, no, I didn't read it. But not, but well, I, yeah, I, you I should trust. apologize for not. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm apologizing for. Uh, not that we disagree, I, but I, no, that's yeah. a fascinating conversation. And, and you know, part of that was like, even though uh, my my script was done, my play was done before the big sick came out. I watched this, and I'm seeing hear that Kumail Nanjiani. Well, I know, yeah, but like, but my sister and I, we. We walked out of that film going there was just something fundamentally wrong with that movie mm-hmm. I totally yeah. agree. and yeah. even like uh and even like the way you know like i said i have zero critique over his relationship with his Correct. and i was just wife. yeah just for the record well, i was yeah, just yeah that I, been identifying criticism. that one point and i didn't think that was fair because right. that's what happened but like to make like the pakistani women just be this like the, these stereotypes who you, you're, less, I mean, are you as, referring specifically to the women that his mom was trying to well yeah arrange yeah the, the arrangement and, yeah like, exactly yeah, and, as, uh, and not to like get too personal but as somebody who's been in those situations <laughs> far too many times than I'd like yeah. I know exactly that it does not go like that at all whatsoever right. you know where I, I where like it, it came across as these women were being pimped out to these mm, yeah yeah. To Kumail Nanjiani, yeah. whose character was, let's face it, not some stud that everybody's lining up to be with. So, I mean, I guess it was, you know, like his movie. And I guess he should, we should just be happy that he was cast in his own movie. Sure. That they didn't accidentally, they didn't like give somebody, you know, get somebody with a tan and just give him the role or something mm-hmm. like that. But, and even like the way he, um, the way he portrays his mom and, yeah. uh, you know, just like in real life. Who maybe, of course, maybe there were some reservations, but never made any kind of inclination to cut him out of the family, and then and then you have Kumail who rejected his, who rejected Islam, yeah. who rejected his culture, and is like, no, I'm not going to let you guys take me out of this family, and I'm like, wow, because he's better than them, you know, he's, he's so, yeah, you know, that kind of stuff is hard yeah. to see. Yeah, you're right. So. Yeah. I don't. I don't yeah, disagree. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, it's it's that that idea of like uh, you you can only be uh, accepted into sort of the pop culture ether if you if you reject to certain. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 the idea of like Sidney Poitier is like the safe black man. Sure, sure. Right. You know, mm. I don't know if you saw this documentary. I'm not your Negro. Yeah. Uh, which is tremendous. You it know. is. Um, I don't. Have you, have you seen that? I've seen about ten minutes. Been meaning to catch yeah. it. It's, it's excellent. Yeah, it I is. actually just screened it a couple weeks ago again for one of my classes. But uh, he talks about uh, the Defiant Ones, mm-hmm. where um, yeah. you have Sidney Poitier and and forgive me, I don't know the other actor, but they're they're handcuffed together and they're prisoners that are on the run, and how, uh, you know, they're trying to get on this train, and and. Uh, you know the, the the white guy falls, and so Sidney Poitier jumps off after him, and how that's the moment that's put in there for the white audience to be like, oh, see, he's okay because he jumped off, and like that's the thing where the black audiences have to kind of like be like, see, that's put in there so that they're not afraid of us, you know, mm. and how different different cultural groups will interface in different ways, and how mm. that's to me the problem with the Big Sick mm-hmm. is exactly what you're describing, where it's like. Yes, we will accept you, but first you got to mm. get rid of this, 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 that, and the other thing, you know. And and I almost feel like the critique of that film, like you said, it's been focused too much on oh, why does it have to be a white woman? But we're not. That's not necessarily the 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 mm-hmm. area of conflict. It's look at what's being done yeah. to diminish and minimize the culture he comes from, and that's and he's in a position where he could have not he done that, have, right? He could have not done that and made it a richer story. That's right. You know? That's right. And, and, and even the characters of the parents, and, I, and again, I get it. I mean, it's about her illness and her falling. So, you know, her parents play a much more, you know, uh, major role in the movie. But it's almost as if his parents, and he had good actors even. Anupam Kher is a great actor yeah. who played his father, is a renowned actor. Um, you know, and so they could have done a lot. But yeah. they are, they're almost reduced to caricatures and, yeah. and I mean, it's, kind of and, cardboard. And, and the problem with that is that because there's not so much representation of our people that 
what he did to his mom in that movie of how she's portrayed, well, that's how people are going to look at my mom now, too. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the part that kind of hurts because, you know, that's why I feel like there's just room for so many more stories. Now, you, you, by the way, you talked about, uh, when it comes to representation, in the same piece about The Big Sick, you talked about the problem with Apu mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. The Simpsons. I'd love for you to, to elucidate on something because you made some In fact, I want to have that come, especially with Brian here, too. Yeah, I, Brian, I, as fan. You know no, 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 not, not that. But as fans of, uh, we're all, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, all four of us, like life on some huge yeah. fans of the show. I mean, exactly, me too. Um, and and I, I know you've gone on the record, at least on the other podcast, about how, look, it didn't, like, me personally, you know, I, I, I wasn't, didn't have a problem with, you know, Apu as a character. Yeah. But I can at least, I, but I, I, I still can relate at least. Uh, as opposed to like Matt Matt Groening or something, right? His his comment. Matt, Matt Groening, yeah. Groening, sorry. Uh, well, what did he say? He said uh, <laughs> people like to pretend <laughs> they're offended, which is yeah. man, contrast that, that to that's the what way a multi-billionaire. Well, contrast that to like say. Hank Azaria, right. who was probably you know not hurting for money either. That's but true. but so he Hank was, Azaria does the voice of Apu on The Simpsons, and he was on Jimmy Kimmel. He was on no, he no. was on the Colbert Thank show. Thank you. <laughs> Get everything wrong. <laughs> right. But I, hey, at least I got a hank of his area right. You got to give me some credit. Um, yeah, but... I mean, I almost feel like we need to contextualize this conversation. Please. Because I don't know how many people who are listening would even understand what we're talking about fully in terms of uh, the, the the issue surrounding gotcha. the character of Apu. Sure. Who is, you know, he's the, the convenience store clerk on The Simpsons. And I would say over the course of the past maybe year or 18 months, there's been this discussion about the appropriateness of having a stereotypical Indian character uh, who is voiced by a white actor mm -hmm. and who for, you know, a big chunk of the last several decades was really the only continuing sympathetic Indian character on television that has changed recently. But even then you have like the character, I think his name is Raj on The Big Bang Theory. I don't watch it, but I think that's is that his name? name? I, don't, I don't watch the show. We don't watch the Big Bang Theory, Jackie. <laughs> Not I don't either. You know, funny people always tell me, "Oh, you should watch the Big Bang Theory. You'd love yeah, it. It's about uh, nerds." And like, <laughs> I don't know why you're why are you saying that? Is this? But 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 again, the stereotype, right? Yeah, you have absolutely. like you if you look at there's a documentary that actually came there's out. a there's a documentary made by a comedian named Hari Kondabolu who has a new special on Netflix by the way, which I haven't yeah. seen, but I've heard is good. Uh, talking about in the, fact that documentary came about as a like a, just a stand-up bit that he did. The on, problem with Apu, you mean? Yeah, the problem with I Apu. Came, I think something he said on the Kamal Bell show. Kamal Bell Kamal show, right exactly, now, was like, no, hey. Kamal, that's his podcast, sorry. His show on his FX. His show on FX was like, and, he, and he, he kind of like pushed Hari to do like this, but hey, you always talk about Apu and yeah. some of the issues you have. Why don't you just get up there and do it? And he did. And then that kind of snowballed into this conversation and then hence led to the... The, yeah, the and it, trouble and, you know, with that food? The problem with that food. With I, I, I was talking to Brian about how I've been going through and watching some older episodes of The Simpsons with my kids. And just like, the, as we're watching it, it was like an Apu episode. It pops into my head. I'm like, you would never see a character like this today. It just could yeah. not happen. And and then literally the next morning, <laughs> see the trailer for the new documentary, The Problem with right. I'm like, well, I'll be darned, you know? And so the, the documentary looks at it through the perspective of a lot of Indian Americans who are very prominent, so Cal Penn, etc. Yeah. And they talk, uh, Cal Penn says, I hate the Simpsons I because know. of Apu, which is, feels theory. like an extreme reaction. But but I get it, yeah. right? But then again, Cal Penn's like big claim to fame is like before Kumar, he was like, uh, um, really? you know, Van Wilder's like stereotype oh. Indian friend. You know what I mean? It's, it's weird, like because because the, the, the portrayal of Indians in pop culture has really been stuck you know you have deadpools like sidekick who's like the stereotypical cab driver cab driver right. depender yeah. you know yeah. and these are actors these are indian american actors right and yeah. they're like they're taking the work it's weird right because it's a corollary to the arab actors arab american actors who have to be by the beard of the prophet you know that's they, right it's you see Remember we had Asif like, manbi on the show and he talks about yes that's right the kink, what was, what, he calls it patanking Yes, that's okay. right. And in fact, the the documentary also has the same. He referenced uh, what's her name, uh, Joffrey from um, the House <coughs> of Cards, who talks. It was her. It was her and Asif who kind of came up with this term called "Oh, did you have to partank during the mm -hmm. during the audition?" And the idea that's of partanking you, is yeah. where you do the yeah, where you shake the head and, and you add the extra, yeah. you know, whatever to the accent to make it sound more Indian. 
Um, and so, uh, yeah. So, sorry, you finish your point, but it, no, it, but right. but I mean, so so this this is a cultural conversation that's yeah, worth that's having, right. and so the fact that it is being had and there's subtleties within it. It, hey, at least we're talking about it. But I just I love the presumptuousness of people who are not part of the group that's affected being like, well, there's there's no nothing to be offended by. You're just being sensitive. It's like you don't or know. pretending yeah. to be offended. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I'll never forget really uh, a couple years ago, 2013. I wrote a review of of the Lone Ranger. The, the the Johnny Depp movie, I'm like one of three people on earth who liked that movie, but but I gave it a positive review. Yeah, and and somebody left a comment and they said I'm not uh, I'm not going to watch this because it's offensive to Native Americans. That's what they said. Because in the film Johnny Depp plays a, a Native American and he's like I'm like one one thirty seventh Cherokee or whatever you know some made up you know thing. But anyway, they they, they said that. Is he another Pocahontas? What's that? Sorry. Did you catch that reference? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so um, anyway, my response to this person, yeah. I very glibly, it was like, there's nothing offensive in this. Like, that was my response. And they responded to me and they said, look, I'm Native American. And I'm offended. Don't, don't tell me yeah. what yeah. I should or shouldn't be offended mm-hmm. by. Don't, you don't know. And that was, honestly, that's something I've carried with me to this day. I'm like, you're right. I don't know. It's yeah. who am I to say, right? And ever since then, I, I always take that into account. Whenever it, it it's... If you are part of the group that is being sort of put under the microscope, you have the ability, uh, you have the moral capital to say this is unacceptable because of X, Y, and Z. If you're not part of that group, you can You know, I'm not. Mm. I'm not black, so I don't get to say, oh, black people shouldn't be offended by this thing or the other. Thing. Right. I just, I don't know. You know, I owe it to them to at least expand my awareness and to expand my understanding. So, with that in mind, when when Hank Azaria is like, look, let's have this conversation. Right. If that means me stepping away and not playing this character anymore, He's that's like, fine. I'm fine with it. That's yeah. fine. I've got like 87 other characters <laughs> to play on that show. That's but true. the fact that Matt Groening, who I said this to Brian, I said Matt Groening is in a place where 30 years ago he was the guy. Yeah. He was the outsider, was the outsider. throwing <laughs> stones. Now he's against the, guy the establishment, to, uh, and right. now he has an empire to defend. Yeah. Yeah. And look at that: people like to pretend they're offended. The arrogance of that! Well, I was gobsmacked by that uh, because I'm just like, you don't know. Yeah. And and to me, it's like you, you Matt Groening, you can't see the window through which this would be offensive. Exactly. You, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Because we don't live in a world where Peter Sellers could do brown face. Uh, and, and it's acceptable. It's funny, you know, because I was, yeah, I was actually telling my daughter about, you know, even Apu and the sort of origins of Apu. I mean, yeah. how Hank Azaria modeled that whole impersonation uh, uh, behind Peter Sellers' character in, 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 in the, the party. party. Yeah. Uh, which, again, Kr- talk about a movie Kr- that Kr- wouldn't be v- made. Bakshi. Sorry? Krundig v. Bakshi. Oh, I just remember the name of his character in the party. I just, uh, Birdie Num Num. Birdie Num Num. Birdie Num Num. And what's funny, by the way, is how Daisy's. Uh, Indian and Pakistani people loved that oh, yeah. movie growing up. I, I grew up. Oh, yeah. I watched the party several right. times because my dad. Party? My dad too. My dad was like, "Oh, we got to <laughs> yeah, watch. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's watch the party. Let's watch it." Yeah. You know, it's What's just, up with that? <laughs> I, think, I think just because, like, oh my god, there's this Indian person, and yeah. you but know, it's Peter Sellers, but in I mean, brown face, literally yeah. in brown face. You know, so it's. But but it's just still something. It's like it's an acknowledgement, scraps. you know. Yes, and they'll take it. And back then, they're like, oh my, what else did we it's have? A brown, we had monkey brains and Temple of Doom. You that's know, true. that's true. So Peter Sellers in the party. That's kind of you know, it's, yeah. it's a little step up. But right. even in, in Temple of Doom, you're like, I understand what what he's yeah. saying. Like, yeah. We don't care oh, about yeah. how they're eating eyeball soup. And yeah, all yeah. Like, but he's saying that language that <laughs> I yeah, I'm rich Puri, and you know, he's there, and, he, yeah. and he's talking about Camino Pagro. Like yeah. you're like, oh wow, yeah, yeah. I always remember that you know so it's like, yeah. like i can understand what he's saying, that's totally saying. No, you're, yeah that's a that's a really good point um i'm curious like brian you work at a, at a studio yeah right so like are, are these conversations now that the like the, like the dynamic of the audience the demographics are changing so much like i would imagine studios are becoming more and more sensitive or oh, yeah. to, to, to that kind of stuff i mean yeah to the point where they're actually, I mean, there's conversations like this, except in a nicer boardroom, I would imagine. <laughs> no, um, this is quite nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, but, and, and talking about these kinds of issues and representation, because, well, I mean, you, you talk about H- Hank Azaria, because one of the points that I did like among many that he made that uh, on that appearance was he's like, I'd love to see more Indian Americans and people of, you know, people of color and represent, you know, not only kind of, um, you know, ha- have a conversation about it, but be in the writing room 
Yeah. Like representation there where it really counts. Yeah. In terms of the actual production and creativity kind of behind this. But I'm just, yeah, curious. I mean, if you've had any experiences where, you know, that becomes like a topic of conversation or discussion. I mean, without yeah, having to... for sure. Because the show I work on, it's called Puppy Dog Pals. Yes. And it's about these two dogs and they uh, have all these missions and a lot of them are globetrotting. Oh. And so um, in the season coming up, you know, we've... Uh, I'm trying to think where they go. Like Puerto Rico okay. was one. And so we made sure we brought in someone who actually was from Puerto Rico and is familiar with the culture and could, right. you know, and they wrote it for us. And then also we had some uh, episode where they go to Hong Kong. We had someone who grew up in Hong Kong come in and um, like we broke the story together as a group and they sort of acted as a consultant, but they were the ones that went off freelance to actually write it for us. Oh, nice. So just to make sure that everything is authentic and not just what we know from brochures we've seen <laughs> you know? so it feels like an authentic uh visit to those places that's that's nice to hear that and, and yeah. this is an this is an, an animated show right yeah 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 so you know the fact that you know it, to go through the you know the, the, that that level of uh or go go through those links to make sure that there is representation yeah that's and it's nice. definitely uh that is nice i think i like you it write too. for the show right i do yeah, yeah. yeah i think i like it too because it it, it uh I can imagine in my head, just with these voices you're saying, like with Matt Groening and stuff, like it being a burdensome thing, maybe for some people, but it's like, we all love it. <laughs> it's nice to get outside yeah. voices in and it's nice to, to feel like you're exposing, we've talked about this before, we like yeah. expo exposing these different cultures to kids because then kids, yeah. we have an episode about Japan and we're like, what if some kid then just like, I want to go to Japan and it becomes like a something they want to do in their life. And so right. it's nice to open up these these things and not just isolate and just have them, you know, going around the U S all the time. Yeah. That reminded me growing up with like big bird goes to Japan, big yeah. bird goes to China. Yeah. And now I think those are kind of slightly racist. So they may be, uh, yeah. I, that'd be interesting to revisit. To, to revisit. Yeah. 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 But it would be like, that was like our introduction to culture, like yeah. big bird going to places. Yeah. So sorry, really random. Yeah. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's a really good, I mean, well, it's very similar cause it's like children's yeah. television. Yeah. It's like the, uh, I think about that too. Sometimes, you know, we'll, have a character or it'll be like a bald eagle or something like that. And it's like, this is the, a, a child's first exposure to like our nation's symbol, symbol right. you know, and how's that bird going to act? Mm. And is it going to be too cocky? Is it going to be like, you know, too meek? Is it going to be yeah. just kind enough? You know, like, <laughs> you, like I, I think about those things or it feels like a responsibility. Fascinating. I mean, we grew up on GI Joe cartoons and it's like, yeah. you know, it was just, you know, it was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, jingoism. Jingoism, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> the best kind. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're. I mean, that was like eighties GI Joe, right? Oh, so, right, right. Yeah. I mean, that's what we grew up with. So you know, for me, like even like with the boo, like I never saw him as a problem. I think when I was a kid, because like, oh, a boo's just mm. his character. But you realize now when you're older, they like that was just so, it's just really kind of wrong. You know, just mm. the way he's been played and the way he's been, uh, you know, portrayed. And even like. A stereotype based already on a stereotype yeah. uh and i but and you know like the way it was addressed in the episode a few weeks ago like i feel like right. i could have given it a pass if the episode was better but it was just this horrible horrible episode and yeah. I'm like i'm waiting for it to get good and i'm waiting for the part that everybody says the address the abu situation i keep hearing about that episode and and luckily just, i dropped off at like yeah. season 12 so you know but, what i thought yeah. was most disappointing yeah. about that was the fact that when I heard the plot of that episode, where Marge has some book that yeah. she grew up with and she oh, wants to share it with her daughter, but then she realizes that with time, maybe this isn't the most, you know, culturally or whatever, it is yeah. like appropriate yeah. book anymore. And how she said, but I grew up with this. I love this. I was like, what a brilliant way to address this whole, yeah. whole thing through some sort of allegory mm -hmm. in their universe. And then when they just completely dropped the ball, tripped over it and then fell off a cliff, it was like <laughs> so disappointing. And I was like... I think it was very disappointing to me personally, and I don't have a lot invested in this anymore because I don't watch it and whatever, yeah. but I was like, that, The Simpsons was like the wittiest, cleverest, you know, show at, at one point, and just for them to be so graceless mm -hmm. in their execution. Yeah. Graceless, that's the word. Yeah. You know, you're just like, yeah. wow, how far it has fallen. Yeah, I mean, right. especially like if, you know, with uh, one particular friend and I, I mean, we still say the same quotes from like God knows when from The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. And then those things still hold up that even though like the last 10, 15 seasons haven't been up to par, like it still means something to us. So mm -hmm. then oh, yeah. the fact that they weren't able to address this and even like you said on, on a movie film, uh, Brian, that 
if they it would have been better had they just not addressed it at all. At all, all right? Yeah. Yeah, it would have yeah, been so much better, you know, because this was just, just don't like, do anything yeah, if that's exactly. what you're going to do. Exactly. That's what you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or if you're not ready, yeah, just wait. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, they they waited. I remember. I mean, this is super off topic, but when they finally addressed episode one on The Simpsons, it was years after. Uh, it already came out. Or so Star I was Wars, like, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. from the Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> you just dropped episode one like me. Don't you know? No, I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, you could have just held on just a little bit longer. Right. But, uh, how did we get here? We, uh, <laughs> well, I have a question. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but sure. Oh, so okay. when, you, when you start with these conversations that feel like things that are on your mind, mm-hmm. at what point when you're like, okay, you don't know what these things are going to be, but it becomes a play. So, like, at what point do you feel like the narrative, you know, with the things that you, you want to express versus, like, actually trying to have a narrative, like, what was the push and pull of, of that and the evolution and the process of all that? So, you know, it's interesting you say that because after the stage reading, it was, uh, so, where it was, like, the very first time where I got to see all the scenes that I wrote and people are, uh, so it was, it was kind of people still had their scripts, but they were still acting it out. And it was like, uh, it was a very evolved stage reading. So I got to see, you know, how, did I actually do what you just said? Mm-hmm. Did I actually really bring together the narrative? And in some respects, yes. But I realized that afterwards, uh, especially hearing, you know, some feedback from people like, you know, this is really great. But it's missing a conflict mm-hmm. where it became more slice of life. Right. Yeah. Rather than, uh, you know, Zuleika's. Uh, journey and that that point where you know the conflict whatever it is and then that being resolved somehow yeah mm-hmm. so like uh, one of the things I heard uh, was I mean it made like for a tr- like an amazing episode of a show uh-huh, but you want to uh-huh. see the rest of you right, want to see the right. rest of the series yeah and and you which know, is a compliment yes. yet mm-hmm. it, it it points to maybe certain things yeah. missing in the in the narrative yeah arc yeah. Or, or or what have you yeah. yeah so so it was really cool for me to see that because um i mean besides the fact that i was trying not to throw up watching you know <laughs> yeah. people uh you know act this stuff out yeah. and um and especially since family was there friends were there and all that kind of stuff but uh, it, it was it was nice because now I've been doing a lot of reading and I've been really open to feedback. Whereas usually the kind of person I am, I'm like, what do you mean it's not perfect? <laughs> yeah, I know. What are you talking about? You know how hard I worked on this. Yeah, yeah. I know. I was yeah. gonna say. And yeah, that was maybe my hard. perspective. Maybe yeah. like when my when I very when I first finished the draft forever ago, my friends like, do you want to say any more? And I'm like, no, I think I'm done. <laughs> and then, I got so, this. Yeah. Yeah. So so now with with everything, like I've been reading this book, like uh, the art and craft of playwriting, which probably in retrospect and maybe should have read before <laughs> I wrote a play. Um, although having said that, they said you should know the ending. And right, right. so maybe it's good I didn't. But, you know, they talk about some of the things like structures and all that kind of stuff where uh, with that book, with just hearing everybody's feedback, being really open to like uh, one of my friends wanted to talk about it. I'm like, okay, let's grab coffee. I had a debrief with the director. I met with the, the girl who started as the main character and apologized to her because she was in actually in every single scene. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'll write something else. With, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just hearing everybody's feedback right. and just being able to like uh, filter it a bit. And just recognizing that whether, you know, whether they have a point or not and how that fits in. And, you know, it makes me excited to really create this kind of structure that you just talked about, Brian, where, um, you know, just take these almost vignettes where um, mm-hmm. this is the slice of life and just make it this complete arc mm-hmm. that exists as a play. Hmm. Right. So, um, yes. And, and so that I'm, lo- so I'm really looking forward to that. I was actually finally using that Evernote app I downloaded years ago on my phone. So right before I go to sleep, oh, oh and they could talk about this. And they could talk mm. about that. And Brevet is at that fundraiser we were at last night yeah. when you were speaking at one point. I was like, these two characters can talk about this. So you were talking <laughs> and I felt bad because I was on my phone. But I was like, Brevet, well, this is okay. It's Brevet. <laughs> you know, so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. I can say I captured the attention of the audience. No, no, you totally I did. That did but so it was, well. just, it was yeah. just this. It was one of those Inspired, things where, where it was like. <laughs> captured and released. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You know, it was one of those things where now it's like from that very first conversation where it lived in my head for months before I finally wrote it down. Now, like these ideas are coming that I just want to get down like these, um, you know, how to how really to, uh, you know, just cultivate, you know, like just really put it across maybe in that very first conversation, the depth of the friendship of these two people that are sitting across that. I know it because I know their background, Mm -hmm. but maybe the audience doesn't know it. And even though everybody was fine with whatever they saw. Like, cause I got, I was really, and it made me so happy. I can't even tell you about like the positive feedback that I got, but 
knowing that that I can just actually make it better mm -hmm. and you know like so people can really see the stuff was that was in my head huh. yeah. that, that I'm just so excited for that you know it's just uh so just even writing for that and even just uh um uh, just you know ki you know just trying to put other perspectives out there like um you know one of the thing I was reading about about plays was that like people if they don't see something in there that they can relate to they they'll go like this can never happen Okay. And um, when I very mm. you, my first submission for this play, my uh, I got a flat denial. And even though say we like the characters, we like the dialogue, the stuff is really nice, but this stuff would just never happen. <laughs> so if you can just you know take care of all that, and then you can resubmit it. And I'm like, okay, let me just take out everything and just. But these are all the things that I know. Yeah. So you know, it's just it's kind of so just kind of like trying to get you know that on my head where people don't see a reflection of themselves mm -hmm. and you realize who the audience for theater uh you know plays usually are and maybe they're not seeing themselves reflected mm -hmm. yeah that um is kind of exciting for me to even though like just take that i mean take that criticism out but just to present another voice and just understand that like playwriting even like plays in general are just this this whole other medium where mm -hmm. You know there are, there can be these other stories out there, mm. and you know I'm just looking forward to just uh, creating designated most like making it that play that it needs to be. Right. And I think that stage reading was just I don't know who benefited more from it than me. You know, like the City Lights Theater in San Jose when they when they accepted it as part of their new play festival, like um, you know that was a big deal for me. And then they assigned a director to it. Who, oh, they assigned the director. They assigned a director oh, okay. who was in charge of casting. Got it. And um, now, this City Lights is connected to the bookstore in San Francisco. No, 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 no. They're no, a separate. No, they're no a separate connection. theater in San Jose. Got it. So then, even from the beginning, uh, just uh, the director, um, uh, she reached out. She wanted to get coffee even before. Like we didn't. We, I didn't even have to be a part of this at all. Oh. You know, this uh, the stage reading. It's like okay, you have my script. It is what it is. Interpreted as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, she wanted to meet, she wanted to talk and about, like, um, uh, she had really good questions about, you know, stuff that we take for granted. Like, uh, you know, there's there's one part where the sister who uh, wants her, the sister of the main character, mm -hmm. uh, who in the play is named Sophia, she wants her sister Zuleika to meet this guy, Jake, that she met at a coffee shop. And, and like, when Zuleika asked, like, how did you meet him? So, oh, you know, he came up and said salam to me, so I knew he was Muslim. Mm -hmm. So uh, the director, like, oh, did do people actually do that? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, if I if I see a fellow Muslim, I'll yeah. say salam, and yeah. you know, like guys will tend to do that too if they know somebody's Muslim. Right. But you know, just for me, that made sense, yeah. and it's. Um, but that was a good question because right. maybe people don't know that, <laughs> and um, huh. and I've definitely had those moments when um, I first become friends with people, and then somebody random will be crossing by and uh, passing by and they'll wear hijab and they say salam to me and I say salam to them. The, uh, my friend would be like, do you know them? I'm like, no. No, we mm -hmm. just, just this they, is what we do. This is what we yeah. do. It's you just know? one of so, the things. So just, um, huh. just, so that's been kind of interesting too, like meeting with the director and just uh, going through the, the rehearsals of like um, in the play at one point, you know that it's been a month where Zuleika and Jake have been quote unquote talking to each other and then they when they meet for this party, um, the director's like, well, you know, are they going to, like, hug? Are they going to shake hands? And then the the guy who's playing Jake, who's not Muslim, he's like, yeah, I was wondering about the physicality. And I'm like, oh, there would be none. <laughs> <laughs> there is no physicality. Yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, you know, so so that's been interesting, too, yeah. where, um, you know, just, just all the stuff that's been living in my head, mm -hmm. where putting it on paper is one thing, mm -hmm. but it's still another thing to have people understand that it's not something that's been left out. It's not something that's... Uh, you know, just something I made up to just, uh, you know, make a story go further. These are, but these were assumptions that I made in my head that uh, not everybody else knows. That's mm -hmm. right. So, or, or uh, we'll I find think that, relatable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, uh, what's the role of, um, of of the of an editor then? Mm -hmm. you, you know, through this process, I'm, I'm, you know, you you because you, you've mentioned you had an editor friend who kind of helped you along, yeah. but did that kind of turn into uh, switch into more of a professional kind of relationship? You found like an actual. You know, an editor who does it for their for, for a living. No, well, or so it remains your kind of like my my editor yeah. friend, my, my, <laughs> yeah, who who I should call uh, I should name my my friend Michelle. Yeah, uh, she's been just really great. And for me, the editor, her, her being an editor was almost like besides reading my stuff and go that makes no sense, mm. or um, you know, I said something wrong, 
or you know just to, to tell me what works what doesn't work but also to be that person to just encourage me mm. you know so as her role her role as my editor was even just to get me to finish the play and uh, even now when i've told her that you know, i'm going to make some rewrites uh, just to kind of have her uh, you know, at, at bay to like to mm -hmm. read my stuff. And we make a joke that like I say 10%, she says 15% of whatever I make, but right now it's 10, 15% of zero. So it hasn't really <laughs> benefited her just yet. So, uh, you have her own just, retainer yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, but just that, you know, just yeah. for, for to have like this editor, to have like this person, just somebody to bounce ideas off of. Because, um, you know, a lot, the my nature sometimes is just to be sometimes stuck on my opinion mm -hmm. and um you know just to, to get that other perspective right of like what works be able to bounce ideas work. off of yeah, somebody yeah. else and and like i said just even that that first uh you know reach out of like yeah let me see your stuff mm -hmm. you know that was something that i i never thought about sending it to anybody um it was just something that was going to live on my computer maybe mm -hmm. ever you know and that's what, the only place it would ever exist Mm -hmm. And uh, just to have that person out there, and then even to say, you know, it's ready enough for, you know, this uh, for a reading in the living room of one of our friends, and um, you know, so uh, and even then it's like, okay, now start submitting it, and uh, she said, you know, at one point like this now it needs to be workshopped uh, by uh, people who know what they're doing with plays, and right. for me that's where the stage reading came in, where okay. you know I really got to see uh, how it all worked together, and um, so. Uh, so yeah, I got I got incredibly lucky that City Lights accepted it as part of their um, as part of their new light, new play festival. Especially since they got the same draft that San Francisco got um, this other place where I submitted and where they said this could never happen, all that great stuff. And um, um, and yet San Jose was like, well, we loved it and we want to we want to put this on for. Um, mm. Uh, you want to, you know, for our stage reading. So it's really interesting. We're in the Bay Area, where you have two places who got the same exact draft. Uh, you know, just came away with completely different things. Mm -hmm. And even though San Jose, after after the stage reading, their feedback was, well, you know, we really liked it, but maybe that conflict is missing. And um, San Francisco felt the same way too with all their other criticisms. Yet City Lights was able to say, even though we felt that conflict was missing we really liked it still and we wanted to mm -hmm. give it the stage yeah. reading right so um where is it now in terms of the like like the, the process so now because oh, yeah. that, yeah. so, yeah. that is important but i want to get a sense of what it was like for you you're in the room there's a whole audience yeah. and here's actors yeah. saying your words what's happening in your head at that moment well um, first it was it was a sold out crowd so that was pretty cool which made everything more nerve wracking and uh, I was just sitting up front you know trying to I didn't sit with family I'm like look you guys don't be offended I'm not gonna sit with any of y'all <laughs> my friends like I just can't even be with you guys so I was sitting up front slouching you know just kind of like oh God, this is happening this is really happening and then I just once in a while glancing up at the crowd to see how they reacted I was a wreck I was a wreck all the way uh, through rehearsals because I, you know, it's a really busy time at my real job and then driving over to rehearsals. Uh, and for me, it was just hard to see these people just, uh, just one, just to see people who are now these, you know, like their physical forms of these characters that I had on paper. <laughs> and that was the, like, oh, nice to meet you guys. I, um, I might be there, you know, just if I'm nervous, it's got nothing to do with you guys. It's just, I'm really, you know, scared right now. And then, and I think what, what scared me was that, that my words would not be interpreted correctly mm -hmm. and uh, by the they, actors by, by the, the actors act, yeah. by the director but you know everybody did a fantastic job and but during rehearsals and this is something that i that i wrote in like in my last blog post was uh, about designated muslim was that during rehearsals i realized that i wrote a romantic comedy <laughs> and i don't know how i felt about that because i never thought i would be the per no, there's nothing wrong with rom-coms sure. a good rom-com is great but i never thought i'd be that person to write something like that and um, that really came through in rehearsals. I'm like, oh, there's two people like they a romantic <laughs> comedy. So uh, you know, but but it but when stuff came together and through the direction of um, you know the director and like the people and you know, like there's only two Muslim characters and everybody else. Well, there's three Muslim characters, um, but there's only two Muslim actors, I should say, mm. and everybody else wasn't Muslim, and yet they wanted to be part of this um, and um, you know they really you know they really liked it so for me that was encouraging mm -hmm. but it made it no less nerve-wracking that night um, because I felt like that this was 
you know, I alluded before that I don't really share myself with people. Right. I don't really like, you know, um, just who I am, just my things. Just so these people would just be seeing something that I wrote. And I don't know how they would have, what they were going to react to it. And these are people like, even me, Bravis, telling your wife, I'm like, hey, that's right, you should come. You yeah. know, I'm like, oh my God, why did I tell <laughs> Like, why did I, why am I telling people out about this? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. what I realized was my best interest to do so. No, and, uh, yeah. and I think I've, I've grown um, a little bit, uh, you know, in regards to promoting and all that, um, you know, like, uh, I, you know, I had a conversation with, uh, with Jahad Ali, who, um, you know, past guest on this show. Past guest about, wrote Domestic yeah, Crusaders. Yeah, exactly. So I reached out to him about advice when I first um, finished the play. Hmm. And him telling me it's a hustle. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> and then when I was getting a stage reading, he told me, okay, promote it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I guess I have to do that. Hmm. You know, but then, I mean, it paid off. It was um, it was sold out for that night. and um, And, you know, so, and from that... I get to see, you know, I got to see what worked and, uh, which, you know, like I liked everything that I saw, but hmm. just to kind of make it more play like, um, is something that I'm really looking forward to doing because now, you know, just talking with people, just having the ideas and just you doing more reading and then just the kinds of conversations that people can have. Just, I'm just really excited about it enriches the process yeah, yeah, and you can, yeah. you know, where to tweak yeah, what, and yeah. what to tweak. Exactly. Yeah. That's the process you're in right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah. so basically, I'm taking in feedback, making notes, and then maybe in a couple of weeks, get, you know, kind of sit on it a bit longer, and then just make those uh, make those updates. Nice. Mm. So you know, yeah. one, one thing uh, Wajahat has said repeatedly, and it's advice I've always passed on to other people. He's like, people will say to him, you know, you should write about blah 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 blah, blah or you should write about blah, and he says, then write it. Mm. Right. He's like, like he's like, and he said, I'm not trying to be dismissive. Yeah. Like, if that's the thing you want to see, then write it. And and you know certainly I've that's people ask me like oh how do I become a movie critic and I'm like you write a movie review and then you write more like that's just that's how it is and I love this story your story of creating this story is just I had this idea and I wrote it mm-hmm. and here we are th- three years later and people are performing your words I mean that's that's blows my mind because mm-hmm. it's that's what it's all about how many people sit there they're like I'd like to see this one day and then they're like you know as they're changing the channel and watching yeah. whatever, you know, right. just write, just start writing, yeah. you know, it's, it's great. Um, so with that in mind, picking up what Professor is saying, what, what's, what's the future, uh, for this play and what, what are, is there, is, do you already have something else mapped out for what you'd like to do next? Well, I, I know what I want to add to it. I want to know how to make it, uh, you know, more play like, I guess I would say, but, uh, you know, it's just, just writing that and just, I don't know where it's going to go f- moving forward. Um, I think it'll be more about the hustle as it is, you know, submitting it more places, getting yeah. more feedback. And of course, you know, like uh, reaching out to the people that may worked on the play during uh, the stage reading to see, you know, get their feedback as well. But uh, probably what I'd like to do is when I have a more complete version, uh, just have maybe a, a focused stage reading at maybe one, one friend suggested just have it at somebody's house, you know, have some people read it and just get like a focus group of like mm-hmm. their comments and all of that and just and kind of go from there. Uh, understanding that, you know, a lot of people do have their own ideas and I think it goes back to like, go ahead and write it, you know, because this, like I said, this play can't have every single story out there. Right. Because people do want to see more diverse Muslims and people like a more diverse set of Muslims and um, uh, people do want to see like, um, you know, different types of, you know, very practicing versions of Muslims, you know, sure. and, uh, and that's varying all levels. Yeah, varying levels. There you yeah. go. Thank you. As you would have in yeah. real life. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so go figure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, and because, because this was more representative of where I, where I am, like my, uh, I don't really have too many Muslim friends, I should say, and even the, the best friend character in the play, uh, is uh, the uh, the character is like a Korean American more representative of the way I grew up. My mm. half my good friends are Korean, and um, and you know they thought you know the one of the fe- one of the questions after the play was like oh you know who made that decision to make the make the character Korean or something like no that's just representative. It wasn't a way for me to you know just really diversify my right. play, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so it just you know maybe some of us have like being in the Bay Area have you know we have different <laughs> types of friends. And uh, you know what? What also is interesting, what resonated with people was just 
uh, the main character being in the workplace environment, which I guess they don't really see. Hmm. Uh, you know, just like like having that bantery type of um, you know conversations with their coworker and and all that. Like uh, for people that the one person who wasn't even Muslim in the audience, uh, they came up to me afterwards like you really captured how it is with like coworkers who are just all up in your business all the time, <laughs> you know, and then you can't help it, you know, just those types of relationships. So I feel like people, you know, really resonated with that as well. Just even seeing this, this Muslim American woman who wears a job, just being this normal person yeah. who goes to work, who has these coworkers, who, um, who just has a really weird, um, friendship with her male coworker, you know, mm-hmm. who's just slightly inappropriate, but not too inappropriate, mm-hmm. but, you know, it's just, uh, uh, so, you know, just, but that's just kind of like how it is just, you know, you have people like who make assumptions about you, but never really maybe even say it. And then it just kind of come, kind okay. of comes up, you know, or, organically at work. So it kind of, that kind of played into the, uh, in the, in the play as well. Right. It's fascinating because I mean, not only in your personal experiences, but your, um, your, 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 your play is almost going through the same process, which is on the one hand, you want to make it authentically you know, Muslim, Muslim, yeah. Well, yeah. but at the same time, you also want it to be, uh, kind of highlighting or showcasing experiences that you have to people outside of the community mm-hmm. who may not, you know, f- under, understand that this is something that we or you, you know, face on a regular basis, right. this idea of like, Oh, like, yeah, I, I look this way or I dress this way, but guess what? I'm going to go see the Avengers this weekend. Yeah. Like, really? Like you watch movies, you know, I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, and so there's that idea of like, uh, like what this is c- certain sociologists refer to as like that, uh, the, the, the idea of double consciousness, right? right? Where you're constantly kind of straddling the two, um, of one, you know, being authentic to who you are within your own community. And at the same time, you know, at the same time having to be the representative or the designated, if you yeah, will, yeah, yeah. Muslim, right? I see so. what you did there for me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, to that point, it's, yeah. it was, it was interesting that, uh, like, um, that in, in the play, there were like a few pop culture references, yeah, you know, I, like I, there's some Superman stuff that's going back to the future. <laughs> there's a couple of things and somebody came up to me afterwards and went, oh yeah, there, there was like those references and stuff like, yeah, because she watches that, you know, yeah. she's from that generation. And even like, uh, um, there was a lot of coffee stuff in there. And even I was wearing my Superman Converse sneakers for the very first time that night. They're like, yo, even your shoes. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And um, there was this one guy in the audience who made a comment on the music uh, that was used during the transitions. He was like, oh, it was really interesting. It was just like American music. And I was like, yeah, because like I thought about what the main character listens to. And if it's what I listen to, Zuleika does not listen to Bollywood music, yeah, you know, yeah, so because yeah. I use these American songs That's as, right. as like yeah. these transitions and um, just that understanding that, you know, there's just, you know, most of them are just these normal people, normal people who happen yeah. to follow a religion, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling that. Yeah. Well, I, I, could, I can't help but like comment on uh, last night we were at a fundraiser mm-hmm. and the keynote speaker was Dr. Sherman Jackson, who we've had on the show, past guests of the show. Um, he made a pop cultural reference. Do you remember it? He made several. Yeah, I don't know. The, there one, were, there were, uh, the one where he's watching the movie. Oh, yeah. yeah there, there you go. And we have oh, Brian yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. He talks about, yeah. so he talks about Terminator <laughs> 2 and, and his experience of watching the movie. He related it to like, like uh, you know, the, the sort of uh, origin story of Islam and the genesis of Islam and the Prophet Muhammad and how he, you know, he kind of tied it in the, to that. But the fact that, you know, we're at this, like, fundraiser, mm-hmm. fundraising mm-hmm. dinner and he's this, like, prestigious, like, Muslim scholar and he's talking about, like, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, you know? Yeah. And so yeah. I thought, but I was like, hey, we're going to record with yeah. Brian the next day. Yeah. Like, I got to mention <laughs> yeah. the yeah, fact that Dr. Jackson too, yeah. name-dropped Terminator 2. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, you know, like, I mean, when and when he say that, when he said that, when he made his, it was like this... Uh, connection of Sarah Connor, uh, like everybody thinking she's crazy. It was a beautiful yeah, point. Yeah, and it was just no like, doubt, yeah. and then just, and then, but she's really just trying to save everybody. And mm-hmm. then he made that, like, he connection. talked about the idea of like where, yeah, Sarah Connor, he, she's locked up in this, you know, because the every, uh, asylum because they think she's crazy, but yet she's having these visions of a reality that she knows that is going to come to pass, and and yet no one believes her, and mm-hmm. she's locked up as being crazy, and that kind of goes back to the early 
Muslim story, right? Of where mm-hmm. like the Prophet Muhammad is like, look, I'm getting revelations from God, and God is saying this is going to happen, and this is what's happening, and everyone's like, oh, you're crazy, or you're, you're you're hallucinating, or whatever. And so he he was talking about how watching Terminator Two and Sarah Connor just he just couldn't help but yeah, find that relatable. Yeah. Well, that's good stories do. Yeah, that's right. You can wind that back to any of the prophets. Oh no, no, no absolutely. I mean, I rejection mean, is one of the. Well, and I mean the the Christ metaphor of John Connor, JC. Jesus Christ. Right. Jeez, I never, I never thought kn- about it. <laughs> I know. JC, it just... That was intentional, right? That, it's got to be. I never thought about it, to be honest. But <laughs> I just wow. assumed it. Yeah. <laughs> you just dropped Dang. something so I get to blow everybody's yeah. mind. Here we go. Just, you blew everybody's <laughs> mind. <laughs> yes. Thanks, everybody. We're done now. <laughs> Quinn Quinn Connor, JC, that's, come on. That's got to be. I would think it was intentional. I... Right, she's the mother of the savior, right? She's, yeah, she has to be protected. Everybody in here is like, what? What? The future savior is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just yeah. no. That totally makes sense. Not like <laughs> saying, so. I mean, did did John Cameron mean to James, James Cameron? Cameron James Cameron. James Cameron. Yeah. Yeah, well, either that, or he thinks of himself. <laughs> <as> <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Either yeah, one. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. then he marries her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now we're getting really into the weeds. No, you know, I'm, I'm curious, just because we're all together here. Um, did you guys, I, I saw, it was I don't know how recent of an interview it was, but with uh, Kevin Feige, I'm changing, you know. Yeah, we, we took a hard look. I know. Yeah. No, no, just uh, because we're, we've been mm-hmm. talking about Muslim representation. Oh, Miss um, Marvel. Yeah, Miss Marvel. I mean, do, do we, how much, how much, uh, what do you put, how much, like, credence do you give to a comment like that? Or first of all, we should probably tell our listeners. So, yeah, I don't know the comment. Yeah, yeah. So, so Ms. Marvel is a Muslim superhero. She's created by G. Willow Wilson. Mm-hmm. and um, We've had Sanaa Manath on the show, who who's was an editor. editor. Who is part of that uh, creation of that character. So she's she's been around for about five years now, the character, I think. At least. Mm-hmm. Uh, very popular. And so the question is, is she going to appear in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? And Kevin Feige, I haven't read the specific interview, but he said something to the effect of, like, we're planning something for her. He's saying now that like Captain Marvel is coming that, out, right? So that that that's coming out in a few months. So. And there is a connection between the two. Well, yes, the because, characters. Because Cap- well, in read. the comic books, Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers was originally Ms. Marvel, uh-huh. and so in the comic, uh, when Cap when Ms. Marvel became Captain Marvel, that left that name open, and so this character uh, Kamala, 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 Kamala. Kamala she takes that name, and. Um, uh, so there is a c- connectedness there. I, uh, their powers are not connected, but yeah. like the symbol, the lightning bolt symbol, that's Ms. Marvel's. That was Carol Danvers' symbol when she was Ms. Marvel. Oh, I see. Uh, so do I think it's going to happen? Like like next year? No, I, I would. I think I think they're leaving the option open, but that I I don't put too much stock in stock. Yeah. Like I think it'll happen eventually, but I mean it's you know there's there's a lot of characters. That I one presumes they want to get to before that, right? So, and, and I mean, I have seen the interview, and and, and he's responding to a question like, "Will we?" I mean, ever what's see he going to say? No, exactly. never. Not <laughs> 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 well, I mean? if he was mad, you know. <laughs> if he was, what are you pretending you're offended? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, you're right, I, I you're think right, he's so. a smart producer. Yeah. He knows the value of of a diverse marketplace. But Black Panther has proved how much value there is. So he's not stupid. He's not going to rule it out. But I don't think it's at the forefront yeah. of their right. And it's it's in the fridge. It's not. Uh, at the front of the fridge, you know, so it's it's there. It's not ready to be pulled out right away. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's fun, fun <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna let you just keep continuing. So yeah, I'm gonna see how a, long you can. That's a go good with this that metaphor. You know, I'm, I'm over there right now. I did, and I will defend that. <laughs> I refuse to be mocked. I think, it needs for my defense. I think it's crazy. I'm also hungry. Did not ask you to file it, but I, yeah, yeah, you're also hungry. <laughs> I think Ms. Marvel has been in a few of the uh, the, the Avengers animated series, right, or something like that. So I've seen a representative. She's, she's really? appeared yeah. at least once yeah. or twice. I think. Yeah, yeah I'm not. I. I I mean, I haven't followed the character yeah. uh, super. And, you know, and speaking of, like, we were talking about Wajahat Ali earlier, something Wajahat posted on social media, like, I mean, I think Sana Amana, you know, the editor mm-hmm. at Marvel, I mean, she had something to do with uh, also um, being Panther. involved with the Black yeah, Panther yeah, movie. Yeah. So, and you mentioned Black Panther just now, but uh, there's some, I, I would imagine the creative I, minds get together you know, at Marvel, if, whether if, it's. Uh, if the success of Black Panther shows anything, it's that nobody knows anything because. Uh, Ike Perlmutter, who was the head of Marvel before it was split into the movie side and the TV side, he was vehemently against making a Black Panther movie, really? and he said, "We're not spending you know 150 million dollars on a movie with a black cast because nobody's going to watch it." And wow. so, so I mean, 
What's he doing now? <laughs> yeah, well, essentially, Disney kick. I mean, he's in yeah. charge of the Marvel TV side. I see. Uh, but but what essentially happened is is Kevin Feige, who runs the studio, the the TV, the movie side. Mm. He's like, uh, I'll leave. Like if 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 I have to keep answering to him, I'll leave. And they the movie side made this decision. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And and Black Panther was not just a success. It was the kind of success it reached rarefied air. Correct. And, you know, it tells you something. Well, you know I, mean? I think until Avengers, it was the number one opening, right? Or no, was that? No, that, that was Force Awakens. No, right, yeah. uh, right yeah. but it, it's it's the number three domestic movie ever made. I mean, who would have predicted? Nobody would have predicted <laughs> exactly. that, you know? I don't think the people at Marvel would have predicted that. But right. it shows that there's a paucity of these types of stories. And mm-hmm. so you, you if you play to that audience in a in a heartfelt way, in a genuine way, the audience will be there, you know? So, that's right. So, uh, you know, winding it back to the conversation we're having, that's why I see such value in the story that you're telling. It doesn't have to be the Muslim story. It's a Muslim story. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need, you know. Uh, we need more of those. So, I, I, and I know Brian's in town to watch Solo together. You that's guys right. Are watching Solo, I'm watching and Solo as part of a duo. <laughs> 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 Nicely done. Um, and and I have a. I, I'm, I'm going to admit this on the podcast, but I had no idea that Donald Glover. Uh, was yeah. Childish Gambino. Oh, and and, oh. and, and his okay. his his <laughs> prowess as a musician. Oh, sure. I mean, the guy's talent seems to have no bounds. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and from what I'm hearing about the early reviews, even <coughs> people are maybe a little tepid even about some aspects of the movie solo. Mm-hmm. Yet, um, there it's almost like unanimous thus far in terms of uh, him as Lando. So, yeah. so from, hearing, yeah. the first time we saw Donald Glover? Yes, yes. I do. Poop my pants. Jerry yeah. pooped his pants. <laughs> Jerry, pooped Jerry. Pants. that's right. Yep. <laughs> Back in like oh five oh yeah. six, I almost suffocated. I was laughing so yeah. hard. I remember, I remember you guys. You or Sean sent it to me. I haven't. I haven't. Oh, seen it. Uh, I heard you guys. You can. About you it could YouTube it. Yeah. yeah, I used to like. This is before community. community. I showed it in one of my classes because I was like, I saw this thing. My friend sent me this thing. You got to see this. So it's like a speech class. I'm like, hold on a second. We watched this five minute <laughs> video of this guy who makes a mess in his pants, and it was it was Donald Glover. Yeah, just can't beat him. And then a couple years later, he's on Community, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And so, so we're thrilled to see him because that's like, yeah, that's what's extraordinary. Yeah, but am I the only one in the room? I mean, that didn't know about his alter ego, Childish Gambino. And... I think in this room you might yeah. be. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, Sorry. I feel like a dork. <laughs> But anyway, I love. I mean, I, I thought you were but, gonna say you didn't know he was black. I was like, he's, I, he's I, black. I thought you were gonna say you didn't know he was Lando, and I'm like, dude, no. I was ready to go. Uh, so that, I, I, I have my geek credentials. I don't have my pop culture credentials. I guess. Fair. Well, you know, uh, no, that's but am I, I, I would imagine I'm not. Uh, I'm not alone in the room as having watched This Is America. Yes, the video. Mean, clearly based on yeah. the, the the millions of. Well, no, I'm just talking about this room for right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming everybody here watched it. Any, yeah. any yeah, thoughts true. or that we want to share or talk about or I know it's it's, Brian, it's what engendered do you think about. Yeah. <laughs> no, I it was brilliant. I, yeah, well, engendered, I mean, engendered a, quite a response out there. Yeah, and it. Uh, I was watching the Saturday Night Live that he was hosting, and apparently that video dropped while he was yes. hosting. Yes. I didn't know that. Right. So I saw the song first. Okay. Like quote unquote live. Yeah. And. I already thought it was impactful. I mean, the visual, I don't know if you guys saw that. I saw the live performance after the video, but nonetheless, it yeah. was. Yeah. All his presentation as Childish Gambino on the night was, like, so great. Like, just making this sort of cultural event, yeah. you know, out of this music and, and out of uh, visuals and whatnot. And then seeing that video, I mean, he had no idea that was coming yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And it, the way that that just, like, exploded. Oh, right. Um, and just... I. I knew you, you, there's a lot you could sort of take from it and sort of think that you understood, right. but I was astounded in this internet age that just within hours, there were so many articles yes. about the interpretations of all the, the exactly. visuals throughout, well, which was think pieces, think yeah. pieces. Yeah. And it's funny. I say think pieces sometimes in a yeah, negative derisive, connotation, yeah. but I mean, that is, I enjoyed all these. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Me too. Cause it's one of those videos that, I mean, I've maybe watched it five, six times, but every time you notice something, yeah. there's so much going on. Which, yeah, yeah, obviously that that in and of itself is a statement about because one of the I think parts that has been discussed is that it's a statement about the media and about you know uh, how we consume information, mm-hmm. uh, especially about what's happening. But uh, yeah, it's it's a powerful powerful piece, man. And uh, I like so anyway. I had no idea. I just I, I knew he was an actor. I knew he had a TV yeah. <laughs> career, yeah. Yeah. and I knew he was Lando. Yeah, 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 right. And I was waiting for him to do his uh, Colt forty five impersonation. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Well, with that, we want yeah. we want to wind things down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe. Well, well, I was going to hand it off to 
Bushra. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bushra, why don't you t- uh, tell people where they can find you? You mentioned your website. Yeah. And sure, sure. Presence. So, uh, let's see. Where am I? Okay, yeah, I'm in the <laughs> Bay Area. You can find me there. Uh, I'm at bushrabernie.com, and um, I'm probably social media wise most um, active on Instagram, Bushra underscore B. It's mostly about coffee. So apologies. Um, <laughs> actually, no, wait, no, no, no apologies. apologies. No apologies. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, find me there, and then yeah. um, if you're in the Bay, my plan is to do like some solo storytelling stuff. So um, you know, just continue off some stuff I've done from last year. So um, uh, just uh, I'll promote that if if I do do it soon. So stay tuned for that. Godspeed. And then, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, just uh, I'm around. Just I'm here at that leaf <laughs> now and then, and uh, yeah, just. Uh, People, to you guys. people can yeah. find you out. Yeah, nice. thank you, um, Brian. Where can people find you? Right. Uh, well, I write for a show called Puppy Dog Pals, which is on Disney Disney Junior. So uh, I think uh, pe- puppy lovers of all ages will enjoy it. So, you also co-host a podcast. Oh, I was, we, I'm so used to. You know what? This is actually. All right, look. No, no, the curtain. This is the part where Brian starts checking out and writing notes. No, about no, editing. Later. I'm having a little fanboy moment because I'm like, oh wow, I get to hear this. I've heard this so much. Yeah. But to see Brian do it in person, I'm just like, whoa, that's so cool. That's so like, funny because I, I remember a little show called because yeah. he did it the same he way as he does at the end of every episode. Yeah. He's like, well, I write for this uh, little show called Puppy Dog Files. Yeah. I just love it. You know, the only thing he's missing is Zachy chiding me about but Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> he knows better because I'm I'm no better than you. I probably have. I don't yeah. do it anymore. I no, I know. Well, you, you did got, give up. You got some flack That's about true. it. I think. Yeah, people were like, "Stop asking him about his Twitter." You know, <laughs> just stop. Like, yeah. Well, you know, when when you first said that years ago, I was like, "I'm gonna." Follow this guy on Twitter. So yeah. I like followed Brian like the next day yeah. or something like that. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's one of party like, twelve just, yeah. or, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> it but I'm not. I rarely use Twitter. Anymore. Yeah, I think you've yeah. tweeted like three times. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're like, like bring back Conan O'Brien to television. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's your most recent tweet, I think. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's funny because the, the, you usually close down the show, and then I start doing notes about what I'm about to do, in, like in editing or something. And uh, every now and then you'll say something to me, and I'll be like, uh, uh what? <laughs> <laughs> like, and you, usually I'll get cut out. <laughs> that is so, true. Right. So, yeah. anything about that, Brian? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's what happens. Okay, yeah. got it. But uh, yeah. yeah, Brian and I host yeah. another podcast called the Movie Film Podcast, where we talk about movies and films. That's the name. <laughs> Movie Film Podcast. Yeah. In podcast which is, form. Which is, by yeah. the way, the title of the podcast is a Simpsons reference. Yep. You want to tell that story? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. there's an episode. I remember, was, is it the Max Power episode or something? Yeah, Max Power. They're, they're talking to uh, TV executives and sort of trying to highlight how simple-minded their concepts are. And they're saying, it's a show about police and cops. <laughs> police, cops, police, cops. So that's the title of the show, Police, Cops. So we're like, well, we talk about movies, film, movie, film. Yep, yeah, that's the show. And it's worked just fine. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Uh, right. But uh, you yeah. can find me at, at my website, ZakisCorner.com, Z-A-K-I-S Corner. It's also my Twitter. It's also my Instagram. Uh, you can also uh, find our show at uh, iTunes and uh, Stitcher Radio, etc. Please do leave a review, leave a star rating. Uh, if you have any feedback for us, you can hit like on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash congruence. You can also email us, diffusedcongruence at gmail.com. And, uh, and like Bushra, please uh, vi- visit our uh, Patreon page, patreon.com slash congruence and became, uh, become a monthly patron. Patron. Every little bit helps, and uh, we appreciate all the loving support we've gotten so far. Um, and I, one of these episodes, I'm going to start dropping names. I just I don't have it on me right now, so please okay. excuse Come, me. Coming soon. That. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, with that, that is episode 66 of Defeats Congruence. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Mm-hmm.